Today I'm going to show you how you can kill the flagship with unsupported boarding. So here we have Kestrel B. Uh, we've got the four basic lasers that it starts with and no other weapons. We have no other offense apart from a teleporter. Now this really shouldn't be happening, uh, at least not repeatedly. If you find yourself in this situation a lot then um, definitely look at what's happening earlier in the game. You really want to find other weapons, go to more stores, buy hacking, that kind of stuff. So don't get into this situation. Nevertheless, uh, you can get out of it and uh, it might be interesting to, sh to see how you can do it. Let's take a look at our ship. We have drone control, teleporter, cloaking. Um, we also have a lot of crew. You don't necessarily need eight crew, it's just helpful. Um, it's helpful to have at least one mantis. Again, you don't need that. It's just helpful. Um, you could get a clone bay. That would be uh, safer. And ideally get backup DNA bank as well, in case your uh, medical system gets hacked. And then all we've got on our ship, the weapons, defense drone, system repair drone. This recharge booster means my um, FTL charge is extremely fast because I have modded it. That's just to get me to this point quickly so I can do the video. Um, and then something you might consider is it might be a good idea to intercept the flagship early if you can because that will give you more rerolls on the hack. And there are a few bad hacks here. Shields is pretty bad. Um, med bay is annoying. You it's you can work around it, but it's it's very tricky. And uh, teleporter is annoying. When we move on to hard mode, cloaking is going to be a problem as well. So there's going to be like four systems that are really bad hacks when we go into hard mode. So just something to bear in mind. I can see my defense drone is pointing this way. I might try to shoot down all the hacks or I might try to position it maybe around here and be selective. Uh, we'll see. Okay, let's jump to the flagship. And what is it gonna hack? I'm gonna put out the defense drone. Uh, it's gonna appear in the same place, facing the same way. And just see what it does. Okay, so that looks like Piloting or oxygen? Maybe oxygen? Maybe battery? Because I think that would be here. And I think oxygen would be here or here. Uh, I don't think it's anything bad, so I guess I'll turn that off. Oh yeah, there it is, we can see. That is an oxygen hack. And because we have level two oxygen, we will be fine. Okay, so the first phase of this... Oh, by the way, I am playing on easy right now. Uh, we will look at hard later. The first phase of this is to board into the isolated weapons and take them out. We can leave the laser crew alive if we want. Oh, I don't need my weapons online. Oh, and I could already have somebody in there, couldn't I? Should have. Okay. Uh, except not double energy, you fool. Oh well. Um, not Zoltan and NG either. <laughs> I've really overstuffed my ship with NG for the purposes of demonstrating stuff later. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. I should have gone uh, Mantis NG, Mantis NG. Let's not lose our crew. And we can drop our shields for the first volley of ions, always.
Human energy is fine. Uh, so you board into the ion next. This is just standard flagship boarding uh, on the lower difficulties. Uh, this one you don't want to drop your shields for because the lasers are coming. I could move the Zoltan into shields if, if that one had hit. Okay, now we are completely safe from the flagship as long as we have three shields up. And so begins the complicated and slow paced part of this fight. All right, so the first thing you want to do is board and break down a bunch of the doors. Um, so something you may not be aware of is that uh, enemy blast doors, once they are broken open, Although they do uh, heal in the same way that your doors do, so they'll only be broken for seven seconds, uh, the enemy AI will never close them um, unless you put a breach uh, in an adjacent room. Something to be aware of here, I don't need my engines powered at all, do I? Um, is that if you're playing on easy or normal, and particularly on easy, these doors are actually stronger. Uh, so the, the amount of health that a door has, the number of hits that it takes to break down, depends on the difficulty, with doors being stronger on lower difficulties. And I think that's because um, they wanted to make boarding defense more difficult on your own ship. Uh, so I actually don't have a good feeling for how long it takes to break down these doors. The thing to do here is just don't be greedy. Pull your crew back um, before they get low on health. Because there's no rush. You you have all the time in the world, given that you've disabled all of the weapons, uh, except for the laser weapon. And I will speed up this part of the video. Remember if you get into a bad situation, um, once you've opened some doors, you can always just start running around and you can run back and forth between rooms. Um, so you're making it harder for enemies to get hits on your crew. Okay, now we have broken down every door on the flagship. You didn't need to break down all of the doors, but kind of why not? You might as well, you have plenty of time. Um, the next task is to kill off all of the crew, apart from maybe this one in the laser. And there are seven of them, and they have a level three med bay, which heals them really fast, uh, and it is four tiles. So it's quite technical and fiddly to, to kill them off, but, but it is possible. Um, in fact, there's multiple ways you can do it. Uh, one way that you could do it, which is different from what I'm going to show you, uh, especially if you have a lot of Mantis, is uh, you could board with four crew into shields and then put maybe two Mantis in this room and two Mantis in hacking. And then when an enemy starts to run out of shields, they'll go through the Mantis gauntlet on their way to the med bay and hopefully you can snipe some of them that way. 
Uh, but the method I'm going to show you doesn't depend so much upon having strong crew, and I think it's a bit more reliable. Now I'm going to be using these six borders. You can definitely do this with five. Uh, I'll probably show you that in a bit, actually. Um, and you don't even need to have any mantis. Uh, two humans would be acceptable here, uh, but you will need at least two crew who are human strength in combat or better. Training will definitely help as it gives you an edge. Um, the reason I've chosen these crew to show you um, for the first time is that hopefully it'll make it clear what their roles are in this technique. So the Mantis are going to be our fighters, and then the four NG are going to be our blockers, and we'll find out what that means in a little bit. But uh, let's get started. The first objective is to get all six crew onto the enemy ship uh, and avoid them taking much damage. That means we board with two, a level three teleporter, very helpful here, of course. Uh, and then we just run around. So we keep moving, they will take some damage, but not very much. And you can uh, cluster your crew up. Uh, if you just sort of move them around in this way. It can help to bunch them up a bit like this. Uh, they might take fewer hits. So we're just stalling for time. Okay, now we are ready to bring our fighters on board and I'm gonna board into a two tile room and I think I'll choose this one, this empty room here. So what we want to do is keep uh, running around with the blockers, with these NG, so that they don't take too much damage. And then we're gonna wait until enemies get low on health and then stop them from running to the medbay. Enemies will run to the medbay when they get to 25% of their maximum health. So with a human, that's gonna be 25 health. And so we just need to keep an eye on this health. Alright, now they're getting a bit low, I'm going to move my four NGs into the med bay. And in fact, I've done this a bit too late, so I will stop this Mantis from attacking uh, for a moment. Just a moment. I don't want them to leave the room, by the way. Alright, as soon as our NGs get into the med bay, the AI will assign four crew to defend the med bay. That means that the med bay is considered to be full and uh, this crew is not able to run there. Now something that you might find happens sometimes, by the way, something to watch out for, is that when you're running around the ship, sometimes these crew might actually rotate positions. Uh, so they might swap out. I actually don't know why that was happening sometimes, uh, but if it does, you can usually work around it. So you see, we're gonna be able to kill these two crew. It's really helpful we have two Mantis, so we can definitely get two taken out. Um, and then we're just gonna bring back our Mantis and start running around again. So we killed two crew out of seven, there's five left. We need to kill one more before the next phase. And that's just doing the same thing over again.
Okay, now they have five crew and we want to kill one more off using this tactic. Uh, once they're down to four crew, of course, we can't block the med bay because it will fit all of them inside it. Now this time I'm going to try using only five crew uh, and there's a couple of variations here, but uh, I'm going to board with two mantis and, and three Angie. Okay, there's two basic ways you could do this when you have five crew. You can use three blockers and two fighters, or you can use four blockers and one fighter. So uh, a Mantis uh, can solo a single human no problem. They don't even need a momentary 2v1 combat advantage. Uh, so we could use four blockers in the med bay still, but we could also just use three, which is what I'm going to do here. So we have our two fighters, as before, and uh, the NGs are just running around. And they're going to get in the med bay. Actually, we'll let this one run. So we, we can't we can't stop this one leaving. Oh, actually that one first. Uh, but we kill off that one. Now that they have four crew left, um, we can't kill any more by blocking the med bay because they can all fit inside the med bay. Um, so what we're going to do instead is use a numbers advantage to kill off the remaining crew. And the way this works is that at any time you have a numbers advantage, pretty much, I mean unless maybe you're on a, a Lanius ship or something, um, you can win the crew fight. And you do that by um, manipulating what systems the AI will defend and stuff like that. The highest priority room for them to defend is the shields room. And we're going to take advantage of that. It's a little bit fiddly, um, especially on the normal and easy mode flagship layouts here with this many crew um, and uh, only these exits on the room, but we should be able to do it. So we board into the med bay with our Mantis and I send the NG to the shields. And because we can fit four NGs inside the shields room, that will pull all of their crew out of the med bay. And then we can just micro our crew in and out of the shields room. But actually, uh, I'm going to let them get stable first. this and then this it would be nicer to have the side rooms available because uh, I like moving into the the artillery rooms because then our crew could keep moving but it's fine and then it's just a lot of micro back and forth so every time all of our crew have left the room, um, the enemies will reassign and they'll prioritize the med bay again. So they'll send two down here. But then when we go back in, they reassess and they see, oh, the shield room needs to be defended from four enemies. So all of them have to do that. And I will speed this up. Thank you. 
Okay, so now we broke their med bay, and we can just finish them off. And what I'm going to do here is send two NGs just to, to help out a little bit, and uh, dance with these two in and out of shields, uh, so they don't all go to med bay at once. Do like this. We can swap our crew around. Okay, and we've killed off all of the flagship crew just using boarding. And now, of course, we can punch down the shields and uh, we can let our basic lasers through. Okay, let's look at the same situation on hard. This is a very similar ship. Um, we have a defense drone too instead. Uh, we do have a repair arm, which is kind of nice, and this uh, shield charge booster. But otherwise, it's essentially the same and a slightly different crew composition. Uh, where's my defense drone at? Uh, so that's pointing that way. That seems alright. What are you hacking? That is battery. That's good. Oh yeah, I don't have my battery. <laughs> of course I don't have my battery. So because we're on hard, we will not be able to disable the missile weapon, and that means we are going to take a fair amount of damage through this slow process. Um, but it is worth boarding the side weapons to neutralize them. Even though they don't do a whole lot of damage, it's going to add up over time, so it's better to be safe. Okay, so because we're on hard mode, we can't survive indefinitely, so we are on a timer. Um, so I'm not going to break down every door. And I'm also going to board more aggressively. Fortunately, um, the doors are weaker on hard as well. We want to pull this crew too, so that the doors get weaker. And then I'm going to board more crew. Oh, I should change their positions. It's fine. And uh, if this, if a crew member settles in the door system, then you might want to move between rooms to pull them out and then go back to attacking doors just to weaken the doors. Uh, I think we'll just stick to this door here and that's enough, probably. I'd like to get all the doors broken um, in one cycle and not waste any more time on it. Oh, I have a system repaired right now as well. Is that enough? Should be. Let's use the battery power while we have it.
Okay, I think what I'm going to do now is show you a slightly different way that you can do this. So we could just do what we did before. Um, what I found with the um, the six crew technique is uh, it works very nicely if you put your two fighters into one of these artillery rooms, so the lasers or the missiles. Uh, I never saw the crew rotate out of these rooms uh, when the other crew were running around, uh, when our crew were running around. So uh, that would be a good option. But I'm going to show you how you can uh, kill off crew using only four borders initially. We use the two mantis and the human and the rock here. So first we board and start running around to uh, conserve health. And then we want to start doing some damage um, to this crew down here. But not too quickly. Because we'll lose progress if we rush and they have to go to the med bay. Maybe about now. See, another crew is coming to join us. Now, the technique I'm about to show you is essentially the same as the previous one, but instead of having a separate group of fighters and blockers, uh, the fighters are going to do the work of the blockers as well. So we have these two fighters, and we're going to have two blockers. Um, but then we'll block the med bay with two fighters as well. Okay. I'm going to start them moving. And I'm going to move both of my mantis in here. So what happens here? Well, this is going to take some explaining. We have now moved four crew into the med bay, which means we're going to pull four enemy crew. And unfortunately, um, this is going to be one of them. Um, but when we leave with our two mantis, the med bay is still blocked with four crew. Why is that? Well, it has to do with how the enemy AI responds to boarding threats. If you have, uh, say, four crew in a big room, then that will cause them to assign four crew to fight yours. But if you leave with some of your crew and put them in a directly into a lower priority system to defend, then the AI will not reevaluate how many crew are in that room. So what is going to happen is I move back into Oxygen with my Mantis. Oxygen is a lower priority system for the AI to defend than Medbay. Um, so the AI still thinks that we have four crew in this Medbay, uh, which means that it's going to be blocked. And we can pick on this crew for a bit while another one arrives. Now, if we were to leave with all of our crew, then uh, it would reevaluate. It would realize that you don't actually have four crew in the Medbay anymore. Let's see what happens. That one got out, unfortunately. I mean, I knew that was going to happen. It's annoying. Um, but we see they are blocking the medbay. They've already blocked the medbay. This one will not be able to run. You see? They have four crew fighting two of ours. And this one is taking a while to come and join. And this is, in fact, how the safety dance works, by the way. That's, that's why when you move two crew between rooms, when you're boarding, or more crew, the enemy will keep moving around and they'll rotate. Okay, so sometimes you can actually kill off um, both of these crew, uh, but it's really tight and uh, quite dangerous, so I'm not gonna do that. I think. No, we just wanna get out. Yeah. Oops, defense drone. 
Only need backup power. Ba only need backup battery power for a moment. And uh, yeah, you can see we got out before their cloak, which is kind of important. Also, it's sort of helpful not to let your crew get too low in health in case a missile snipes them. So one thing that's nice about that technique is that um, you can keep more of your crew on your ship because you only need four boarders in this stage. And also, it only takes three teleports rather than five. The downside is that you can't really kill two crew at once. Um, so I'm not sure exactly which one would be uh, quicker in practice. Um, but it's kind of nice to know you can do this with four crew. When you are doing it this way, you need to be quite careful about the timing. Um, because you don't have a lot of margin. So you need to think about their cloak timing. So I'm actually going to wait a bit now, I think. Send everyone in the med bay. They start to move. You move back in with the mantis. And now four enemies are being pulled to this med bay, even though we only have two crew, because of this uh, difference between a, a higher priority and a lower priority system and how the AI reacts. So we kill this one pretty quickly. Oh, we might even get two here. No. We won't. And retreat. And now we can just do the same thing a few more times, so I will speed up the video. A pretty good timing is to wait for them to cloak again and then start fighting in oxygen. Oh, they shot my battery. That actually helps me. We might be able to get two here, but it's probably too risky. Be really nice. I think we can do it. Yeah. But you can see this is about as, as close as you should cut it, really. Okay, these fires are getting annoying. Wow, that was annoying. Uh, that was sloppy because I was distracted by making the video and uh, also all the micro on the enemy ship. But uh, yeah, those fires got a bit out of control. Interesting how you know a central hack can cause a lot of problems when you get some fires.
Okay, so now we are down to four enemy crew. Um, and I'm going to use six borders to deal with them because I can't block the medbay anymore. And so begins the tedious micro. Okay, we destroyed the medbay. Now you could actually go after the missiles first to do one point of damage and make yourself safe from them. Um, but I'm inclined to just preserve my crew's health and make sure that we finish this fight now. You know, if I take one more volley of missiles, it's not the end of the world. Well, we made it, but we took a, a bunch of damage. That's okay. Uh, we got two back from the repair arm. Uh, 18 hull, so we were down to 16 hull. We lost 14 hull. That's a lot in phase one. But we'll still win. There is, in fact, a repair beacon right next to me, but let's just pretend it's not there and uh, work with our current hull. So there's two repair beacons. Game is taunting me. Okay, phase two, basic stuff. Ball the missiles first, straight away, and they won't fire. I'll put up. I'll put up a defense drone. Shoot down the boarding drone. Might want to board into lasers next, as we uh, will be taking multiple drone searches. Uh, maybe put someone on shields as well. Whoops. Attack shields next. Back to green, thanks for the power of repair arm. And I can do some, some anti-mind control prep here, I don't need to be too fancy. Uh, once the Zoltan Shield is down, you want to board immediately. Uh, they are going to be recharging their Zoltan Shield in this fight. Switch off the missiles as always. I will actually do a long cloak because I want to uh, cloak until these missiles are, are broken effectively. I don't want them firing again. Not so concerned about the power surge. Next boarding target is probably mind control. 
because it's annoying. Alright, I actually don't know what just happened. I lost the audio for the rest of this video, but it doesn't matter. You can see that once you kill the crew in phase one, it's really not that bad. We're down to 19 hull, uh, and we got four back from repair arm, so, you know, we lost half our hull. And uh, there you go. Hope you found that useful or interesting. Okay, okay, 40 minutes of meticulous crew micro is clearly not enough, so uh, we're gonna do a little bit more. Doing this video got me thinking about whether I could do it with just four crew. Uh, so we'll attempt that now. And we've got the same setup, uh, basically. Uh, the only difference is that uh, we have these four crew, uh, two mantis, a human, and a slug. None of them have combat training. And I did give myself level three piloting because uh, we're not going to have anyone flying the ship for most of the time in uh, phase one anyway. Let's take a look, where is my defense drone at? I think I'll let it move around. Uh, no, it's facing this way. Let's swing back to around here. All right, let's go. What are you hacking? With four crew especially, I think I really need not to have a bad hack. That could be med bay, could be shields. Can that still be shields? Maybe could be engines, that's not good either. That is... Could be any of these systems still. Yeah, that's got to be shields. Oh, that's med bay. Why do you have to miss? I can work around that. But it's really bad. And it's going to lose... It's going to cost me a lot of time. Maybe should have repositioned my defense drone, I guess. Uh, that is oxygen. We'll take it. Okay, I've skipped to the part where we gotten down to four crew because, um, of course, we're just doing the same stuff we did before. We were using four crew um, before, up until this point. Um, but now we have to kill four of their crew with four of our own, and that's quite tricky. I did take two hull points of damage that I should not have taken because I forgot to put my shields up after a long cloak. Now something you could do here is get all of their crew down to uh, low health but above 25. And the way you would do that is keep borders on their ship at all times and just gradually chip away at them, you know, run around, get 2v1s, but make sure you don't get them below 25%. If they go below 25, they will run to the medbay. Now, None of them will go heal, provided they are above 25 and you still have borders on their ship. As soon as you leave with the last of your borders, they will go instantly and heal in the med bay. That is because the healing AI is different depending on whether the enemy ship is considered to be calm. And calm means that they have no system damage, no fires, no breaches, and no borders. In other words, there's nothing going wrong on the enemy ship, and it is, that means it's calm, and they will go heal as soon as they take a single point of damage. Now, that does not just apply to, say, the crew that is occupied with repairing a system. That applies to all of the crew on the ship. It's a kind of global AI switch that gets flipped as soon as there's a threat on their ship. So what you could do is, uh, you know, board, do some damage, run around and pull back two of your borders to heal and then swap them around. So you can heal your borders fully and have four healthy borders while they're low on health. You can do that, um, but it doesn't actually help here um, because it just wastes time. It does give you a bit more margin for crew safety, but uh, 
that's not necessary and we'd just be losing more hull. So I'm going to board immediately. Alright, so now we want to cluster their crew together. We're going to gather them together because we want to pull them all into a room at the same time. Roughly the same time. Like this. Uh, I better remember to cloak. And now we're just going to watch the crew health. What I want to do here is uh, send these three crew out the room and then pick on this crew in the bottom right corner because they're furthest from the door. And that's, that's why we've picked this room, by the way. And I'm going to rotate my crew so the um, Mantis is doing damage more equally. But crew damage is randomized. Spot them again. Forty two, thirty four, forty seven, forty five. Okay, that one's running. So now we have to be careful about this human who's going to start randomly targeting enemies in the room. And we don't want him to target this one too much. We need to keep an eye on the health of this one. Everyone else I think we can just let go. They're running. So this crew can take... say, one hit from the slug maybe two but I don't think they can necessarily take a hit from the slug and the mantis certainly not a hit from the slug the mantis and the human so I need to move my crew soon okay that crew is now running as well Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. I should have stored that. You can actually store punches in the sense that if you have a crew um, standing still on a tile in an enemy room where there is something to attack, be it a system or a crew, they, uh, they, they kind of store their punch if they're partway through charging it, which is really weird when you consider that um, system damage is actually continuous. So it's not individual punches, but they still have the punching animation and um, they they will hold on to it. And if you move them into another room, even um, they can instantly punch the crew. But it's, it's quite difficult to time. So now what we want to do is make sure that this crew doesn't leave the room too early. We want uh, some control. And ideally, we're going to try to store a punch. Uh, I think these two are kind of close to punching, so I want to be careful with them. This one is just punched. So 
I'll move them around. Is that another punch? Okay, so they're now one hit away potentially from running. And what that means is that I need to keep my crew moving, but only just a little bit. This, I think, is just an animation. Which it might not be. Yeah, that's just an animation. This stuff is really confusing. Like, this doesn't then hit them and suddenly cause them to run. Waiting for the slug to hit them one more time. The micro here is really, really fiddly. And even with all of the micro, it's, it's hard to be sure exactly what's going on. So what I'm trying to do here is stop them from attacking for a moment, but also have them ready to attack as soon as possible. Actually, I wonder if I could just do it like this. Yeah, that's a lot easier. So what I've done here is I've selected them in the fill order and then I can just click in and out uh, with another four tile room. Okay, they're running. So now we want to try to kill them either in the room or running after them. And it does come down to combat rolls to some extent. Okay. They only need one hit. I'm going to try running after them. Okay, we got him. Thank fuck for that. I want to make clear at this point that what we have been doing here is relying on an increasingly threadbare rope of tactical arrogance to extract ourselves from deeper and deeper pits of strategic ineptitude. Which is a fancy way of saying, this is dumb, this micro is hideously fiddly, and it's now taken the point to the point where um, it's not that reliable. It's so easy to mess up, and there's even, I think, an element of luck involved here with the combat rolls that you get. Um, so don't do this, right? Uh, it's interesting to know that I can. It's interesting to see the limits that can be pushed, but don't try to beat the flagship with no offense and a teleporter and four crew. Anyway. Just killing this crew, this one crew, is the critical advantage that we need. And um, we're going to take a bit more damage, but not a whole lot. 
because now I'm going to start breaking the missiles. And we are just going to pull back our crew right now because it's too dangerous. Okay, so now we board, we break down doors, and we just take down the missile launcher. Uh, I am concerned about hull at this point. Strategically, the point here is that we outnumber them so we can break a system. As long as it's not shields. Well, we can still do some damage to shields, actually. So one thing you could do is, um, instead of all this, uh, which might actually be better, is to get everyone on their ship healthy, go into shields, send all their crew to the med bay, punch down a level of shields, and then you can attack them with your basic lasers. But I'm trying to do this without... Right, like relying on the weapons at all. Alright, we've broken the missiles and they are never going to be able to fix them. And that is because we simply run around and distract them. Two crew can distract three enemies. So what we will do is take our least healthy crew and bring them back. run around with the other two. Oh, have I got these bunched up too much? Yeah, they were they might have actually been exactly in the same position, which means they wouldn't pull. That was weird. So of course every time the enemy crew leaves the room, the repair is reset. But we have all the time in the world now. We are completely safe from phase one. Now we can even, um, maintain progress if we need to retreat if the micro goes badly then we can do the same thing we did before and just keep two crew on the ship keep running around and they'll never be able to repair the medbay either and now i can really mess with them by just splitting my crew this is a fairly easy way of doing it Maybe I have to be a bit more careful here because that mantis is low on health. But you see we've got 2v1 here as well. Time to power up the lasers. Oh my god, finally.
All right. We did get two health back from the repair arm, which is really nice. Phase two, I'm going to board straight into missiles. I need to micro the defense drone a bit to stop it getting distracted by combat drone shots. I do want it to shoot down the boarding drone. Should prioritize that, I think. And I am going to need to board with all my crew. Turn the drone off now. I'll board into shields next. Could go into lasers, but I want to uh, use the time that I have um, to break down shields and start doing damage with my weapons. I will cloak the first surge uh, regardless, I think. Well, we'll see. Uh, oh yeah, another drone. Oh, I'm gonna let this shot hit. I think. Yeah. So I would like to shoot down the boarding drone. Uh, that's not happening, is it? Okay, fine. Yeah, it took priority with the lasers. I could sacrifice the system repair drone. Just to, um slow it down a bit and maybe repair that breach. I think that's a good idea. And we're going to go all into shields now. I think I do want to start on lasers. I'm going to do a 10 second cloak here. I think we can always break it in a moment. I think we do want to break it now. Ow! Took hull damage. I think I will do one point of damage into drones quickly. I also want to shut off that um, beam weapon. but we get away with it. Okay, fine. Boarding drone is now up because we destroyed their defense drone. 
Uh, but it will go down. I think I'm going to let them beat on drones a bit more though, because I don't want to take this damage here. Come on, switch it off. Oh, that's really annoying. Really, really annoying. But so it goes. Uh, one more point of hull damage. And oh, they're not dead before the next surge. That's kind of bad. <laughs> I'm just going to bring my crew back. Oh, I could have actually tried to do more of that. Good dodge. Wait, what was that? My defense drone. Okay, I guess we're trading blows there. Another two hole back from repair arm, so we're on 13. A little bit of anti-mind control micro to, to put everyone in the teleporter when we arrive. Phase 3 is going to be rough. But at least all you have to do is kill it, right? Oh, I should, uh, should actually have someone on weapons, really. And I should technically have got training for Matt the Mantis here on Phase 1. After we'd made it safe, that would be absolutely correct. What? Oh my god. One. Two, three. That's enough. Let's try to break cloak as soon as possible. You should run out of mind control soonish. Getting through the Zoltan shield is quite important here. Okay, missiles have fired. How long do I want to cloak for? Well, I'm going to be firing my basic lasers soon anyway, so I think it's just five seconds. I should have moved that, that crew already. And they're firing again, that's a really good timing. Do I want to cloak longer? I think we'll have this down.
I think I go into mind control next. Because it's very disruptive. That is really annoying. What I should have done is damage shield so I could then distract them. Uh, I guess I should also have my basic lasers powered. Whatever. <laughs> But at this point, it's, it's very hard for the flagship to damage us, as long as we keep the missiles suppressed. Little dodge with the drone there. Just separating my human because he's low on health. I don't want to get sniped by a level 3 mind-controlled Mantis monster. Whoops. So the shield damage here makes it easy to deal with the mind control. Because uh, they'll just ignore your crew once you leave the shield room and go repair shields. All right, finally. So it is possible, but it's bad. Don't do this at home, kids. <laughs>